everyone and welcome back to the chem school today we are going to talk about what is nucleophilicity and what are the trends that a nucleophile can show it means if i give you a certain sequence of nucleophiles you should be able to decide which one is a stronger nucleophile and which one is a weaker nucleophile at the same time we will also understand what is the difference between a nucleophile and organic base so let's get started so to begin with today's lecture, we will talk about first what is the difference between a nucleophile and an organic base. Okay, so have a look at both these examples. The first one you have an hydroxide ion which is now reacting with ethyl chloride, right? So let's put the charges first. So if you have chlorine, it's electronegative, so this is going to be delta negative, while the carbon to which it is attached is going to be delta positive. And we know that opposite charges attract each other. So what will happen in this case? In this case, the negative charge will now attack the electrophilic center. That is a positively charged carbon. Okay. So what you will get? So what we get over here is, you will now have OH over here. Right. And the Cl will move out. Okay. Giving us chloride ion. So you have Cl minus now. Clear? right the second one is the same thing that is you have hydroxide ion but the difference here is you have phenol and in phenol this H is acidic in nature okay now OH is going to behave as a base so what will OH do it will donate its electron to hydrogen right check your OH has donated the electron to carbon right and now you have carbon and OH bond O bond right CO bond new form here what is happening OH is now attacking this proton right so now you will have water formation right and you will have phenoxide and which is formed so you will get this o minus plus you will get h2o right so here it was acid base reaction right so understand the difference what is happening in organic chemistry nucleophile is something that is going to attack a carbon okay so nucleophile if it is any particular species if it is electron rich and it is going to attack carbon electron deficient carbon then you will call that as a nucleophile right similarly if something is electron rich and it is abstracting proton right it is now donating the electron to proton electron deficient hydrogen then you will call this as base to repeat a nucleophile will always attack electrophilic carbon while a base will always attack a proton to form water that is the difference in organic chemistry so now henceforth what we are going to see we are going to see which one is a stronger nucleophile so we will see trends of nucleophile let's talk about the trends in nucleophilicity okay so the first one is nucleophile is directly proportional to charge or you can say nucleophilicity is directly proportional to charge what does that mean if you have a nucleophile with a charge higher the charge more will be the tendency of the species to donate electron okay so for that i have taken two examples have a look at the first one so you have hydroxide ion and you have water okay so in this case what you can see that this oxygen has a negative charge oxygen is the electron donor here also oxygen is the electron donor it is going to donate the pair of electron okay so in this case negative charge species is donating electron and in this case lone pair is getting donated so which one is going to be more nucleophilic so we said nucleophilicity is rightly proportional to charge it means the species that has a charge negative charge will be more nucleophilic okay similarly if you have a look at the next one it is almost similar examples if you have alcohol right and you have this methoxide ion so your oxygen is having negative charge therefore it is going to be more nucleophilic than this okay now what are these two exactly if water loses its proton then the conjugate base water is losing proton it means water is behaving as an acid right so the base that is obtained is called as conjugate base the conjugate base will always be a stronger base okay so if it is a weak acid then the conjugate base is going to be strong similarly alcohol are weak acids right so methanol is a weak acid so its conjugate base is going to be a stronger base right so this is what you should understand now we said that higher the charge more is going to be the nucleophilicity but this example is a bit different why you have oxygen with a negative charge even here you have oxygen with a negative charge right but what is the difference 
In this case, this is a simple methoxide ion, but this is a phenoxide ion. So we know that if it is a phenoxide ion, it will show resonance. So what will happen now? Now you will have this negative charge going here, right? And this will go over here, giving you different resonating structure. So what are going to be the different resonating structures? Okay, so what you get is, you will get this with the negative charge on this carbon, right? Similarly, you will get other two resonating structure that is now you will have a negative charge on like suppose this then you have a negative charge on para and you have a double bond over here and the last resonating structure let's say okay so you have a double bond o and a negative charge over here and again this will go here and the negative charge will move to the oxygen so what is happening over here the negative charge is getting distributed inside the ring, right? So it means the net charge that is available on oxygen is decreasing, okay? So remember, whenever you have resonance, right? I repeat, whenever you have resonance, the net charge on the particular atom decreases. Therefore, that negative charge is less available for donating, right? But in this case, the negative charge is not getting donated. Therefore, what will happen in this case? This negative charge will be completely available for donating. Therefore, this particular molecule is going to be more nucleophilic. Okay, I repeat, therefore, methoxide is going to be more nucleophilic than phenoxide. I hope this is very clear to all of you. So now we know that if you have increase in negative charge, the nucleophilicity will increase. The second, if you have more resonance, the nucleophilicity will decrease. So let's talk about the third point that is if you have lone pair lone pair repulsion okay i repeat if you have lone pair lone pair repulsion then the nucleophilicity will increase let's understand with help of example here i have taken hydrazine now in hydrazine both the nitrogens have lone pair close to each other so what will happen this lone pair will now come close to each other right and now this lone pairs are electrons and electrons are negative charge and we know that like charges repel each other right because of this what will happen now because here the electrons are repelling each other what will happen is one pair of electron will get donated much faster than ammonia right therefore this is said to be more nucleophilic than ammonia so i repeat hydrazine this is hydrazine hydrazine is more nucleophilic than ammonia the same thing happened with hydrogen peroxide so in this case what happens is oxygen has each oxygen has two pair of electron two lone pairs so two oxygen has four lone pairs so what will happen this four lone pairs will now repel with each other therefore if one pair of electron is donated right the electronic repulsion will decrease and the molecule will become more stable that is the reason this pair of electrons are readily donated because they are easily donated they are more nucleophilic Therefore, hydrogen peroxide is going to be more nucleophilic than water. Okay, so I hope this example is very clear to all of you. So the fourth one is steric hindrance. Now remember, here we are talking about steric hindrance with respect to other groups and it is not lone pair. Okay, so that has to be very clear. So when two lone pairs are close to each other, then the electron donating tendency of one pair of electron increases. But when you have different group, let's see in this case, the oxygen here is nucleophilic right but have a look here you have ethyl right here you have isopropyl while here you have tertiary butyl group close to your o minus or at the alpha position so what happens in this case in this case when this nucleophile this this negative charge is getting donated okay so this effect will have very less electron repulsion or this group will have very less electron repulsion but in this case this group and this group is bulky so what will happen when the negative charge is now trying to donate the electron to someone right the electron on this particular group will repel the electrons on this particular group so when they are trying to approach close to each other because of negative charge repulsion they will again move away from each other so the donating tendency is now decreasing clear so this has to be understood i repeat when when you have a bulky group the electron donation becomes a bit more difficult and therefore the nucleophilicity of the system will decrease okay remember that yes you have steric effect here apart from that you also have inductive effect here but inductive effect is a weak effect so we will 
ignore inductive effect completely in this case and let's understand that steric hindrance increases nucleus felicity will keep on decreasing and therefore this is going to be a much better nucleophile than tertiary butoxide okay so the tendency will be or the trend will be this and then this and then the last one okay so i hope this is very clear to all of you so let's understand the next and most important one that is electronegativity and nucleophilicity relation. So you can see the relation is inversely proportional. It means if you have a charge on electronegative atom, okay, and if the electronegativity is more, then the nucleophilicity is going to be less, right? So have a look at the simple example first one that is you have fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine with a negative charge, therefore they will become halide. Fluoride, chloride, bromide and iodide. We know that fluorine is most electronegative in the entire periodic table, right? So electronegativity is high. So the charge density is going to be very, very high. If the charge density is going to be very, very high, then the donation of the electron is going to be less. Okay. So remember that. So because it is more electronegative, the tendency of donating the electron is going to be less. While in this case, I minus is less electronegative. Therefore, the tendency of donating the electron is going to be more. Clear? So, your trend for nucleophilicity will be, your I minus will be more nucleophilic, right? Followed by Br minus, followed by Cl minus and the least nucleophilic felicity will be shown by fluoride. Similarly, have a look at the next one. So, you have CH3 minus, okay? NH2 minus, OH minus and F minus. So, in this case, which one is going to be most nucleophilic? CH3 minus will be most nucleophilic. Why? Because carbon is having the least electronegativity. 2.5 for carbon, nitrogen is 3, right? Oxygen is 3.5 and fluorine is 4. So, electronegativity is increasing and therefore the nucleophilicity will decrease. And all the negative charge is on the electronegative atom, okay? So, this is going to be your trend, fine? So, I hope this is very clear to all of you. So, now let's try to understand the most tricky part of nucleophilicity and that is the effect of solvent. So, when you talk about solvent, here we are talking about two types of solvents, that is polar protic right so polar we know that it has uh, like charge difference but protic is it should have proton like water right it has dipole oh o will have negative charge h will have positive charge so there is charge so it is polar there is difference in the electronegativity so both of them have partial charges but apart from that alcohol and water also has h that can be donated therefore they are polar protic solvents but if you do not have H, that is proton in a solvent that can be donated, then you call that as a polar aprotic solvent. So some examples of polar aprotic solvent is going to be DMF, ether, you have acetone and different ketones. You can have DMSO, that is dimethyl sulfoxide. Now what happens to nucleophilicity when you change the solvent? So let's see. Just remember for polar protic, the bigger the better, right? I repeat, the bigger the better, okay? It means... The larger nucleophiles or the larger ions will show more nucleophilicity. I repeat, the bigger ions will show more nucleophilicity in polar protein. So I repeat, bigger the better. So if the size of ion is increasing, the nucleophilicity will also increase. So let's talk about a trend. So if you have again this trend that is fluoride, chloride, bromide and iodide. Iodide, right, this is going to be more nucleophilic in water. Why? Because this is the biggest in size or it is larger in size. Why? Why? Why does this happen? Check out. In this case, if you check, iodine will have or iodide will have the least charge density because it has a larger size, the charge is distributed, right? Therefore, the hydration will keep on decreasing. Because the hydration is decreasing, what will happen to the nucleophilicity? The nucleophilicity will keep on increasing. Therefore, iodide is going to be most nucleophilic in this case. But if you have the same like ions and the solvent is polar aprotic, right? So in this case, what will happen? In this case, the charge density, if it is increasing, then the solvation will keep on increasing. So which ion has the maximum charge density? Now F minus, that is fluoride has the maximum charge density. So because charge density is now increasing, the solvation will increase and the nucleophilicity will increase. So you can see that the trend is opposite for both of them. Okay. Charge density and hydration decreases, nucleophilicity increases in polar protic solvent. But in polar prote aprotic solvent, charge density increases, solvation increases and the nucleophilicity will also increase, right? So you have to remember this, this is tricky. And one more thing, 
if there is no solvent specified i repeat if there is no solvent specified you will always consider polar protein why because you consider water as a universal solvent so if there is no solvent specified you assume that the effect is taking place in water as a solvent okay so this has to be very clear Now, important takeaway that is a very important example remember in ammonia and in amines you have something called as umbrella flipping I repeat, in ammonia and in amines, you have something called as umbrella flipping. That is, if this part is nitrogen, right, and this is a three valency, right, and I have attached methyl, methyl, methyl over here. Consider that the lower part is lone pair. So what happens is, they will always keep on flipping. Okay, so whenever they are in solvent, they will always keep on flipping. Because they are flipping, what will happen? This lone pair is not easily available. Okay, I repeat, this lone pair is not going to be easily available because of that what happens if i have similar structure which is now cyclic in this case if you can see there is restricted rotation because there is restricted rotation this lone pair is more available for donating and therefore this particular molecule is going to be more nucleophilic while this is going to be less nucleophilic so remember more the umbrella flipping i repeat more the umbrella flipping less will be your nucleophilicity Okay, so remember that this particular molecule is going to be more nucleophilic than your trimethyl amine. I hope this is very clear to all of you. So let's summarize today's lecture. What we said is, first one, we said that a nucleophile is a species that donates electron to the carbon, that is electrophilic. Okay, similarly, a base is something that will donate electron to a proton, that is H+. Okay, next, the factor that affects the strength of a nucleophile, the first one, higher the charge more will be the nucleophilicity next one the resonance if there is more resonance then the nucleophilicity will keep on decreasing because the charge is getting distributed the steric hindrance if the steric hindrance is increasing then the nucleophilicity will keep on decreasing the next one if you have lone pair lone pair repulsion if you have two lone pair close to each other then one pair of electron will be donated faster because the nucleophilicity will now increase to make the molecule stable the next one bigger the better okay for what for polar protic solvents so if you have a polar protic solvent then the bigger ion will be more nucleophilic similarly smaller the better for polar aprotic if you have a smaller ion then the nucleophilicity will be more in polar aprotic solvents okay one more thing about the electronegativity if electronegativity is more right if electronegativity is more then we know that in this case the nucleophilicity will be less okay so more electronegative atom will have less tendency to, uh, less tendency of donating the electron so i hope this was all for the day and you are very clear with this okay see you soon in the next class thank you